The one time of year that we all look forward to is definitely the spawn. Folks, when that water temperature hits 60, the crappie just come alive. And I'm telling you, you can fish shallow, you can fish structure. And on this episode, that's what we do. We do it all. And we definitely put some slabs in the boat. Here we go. Good morning. It's a early, early morning. Spawn time, baby. We're gonna start off by casting up front. I'm gonna get walk you right through what I do on a daily spawn outing. So we're gonna start off by casting up shallow with a minnow. There's nothing like the spawn to bring back that childhood memory of throwing a float. And folks, on this morning, we get to do it all. We throw a float, we throw a jig, we vertical jig trees. It's just a fantastic time of the year that we all look forward to. There's a good fish. Off to a good start, sun's just coming up. That's a good solid fish right there. So I'm, so I'm fishing with my classic minnow setup. Kamel, slip float, six pound line, a number seven split shot, number two hook. That's my minnow setup. I don't know if you necessarily need minnows right now, but um, I'm prepping for a guide trip tomorrow. So I'm checking just a little bit of everything out. But right now I'm fishing about three and a half foot down and about nine foot of water. be fair, I also like the dead stick sometimes. I'll throw that float out there, let it sit, especially on calm days like today, and then I'll just cast around it. And what that does is that gives me a good idea, a good picture as to what, what they're liking. Do they like artificial? Do they like it moving? What colors are working on top of whether or not the minnows are working? And believe it or not, sometimes minnows don't work. It's really wild. My wife would love these bluegill, but that's not what we're after today, so. I want those bluegill back. All right, so a, a lot of people ask me, like, where should I fish when I'm at the spawn, during the spawn? And obviously out here on my lake, we're fishing the weed edge, and I'll show you a picture of that real quick here. So weed edge is anything in here. But what's really good about, what's, what's really, what you're really looking for is some kind of combination of structure and weed edge. So you'll see here that we have a down tree. So this down tree right here, that makes for a really good combination. So yes, weed edge, no doubt about it, fish along a weed edge. Um, but when you see something sticking up, anything laying down off of a hillside, um, a lot of times the canopy of that tree is in the water as well. So that combination of structure and weed edge makes for a very powerful spawning area for these fish. And whether or not they're actually spawning in it or not, usually it's a, a waypoint for them to stop before they... Sometimes you gotta cast to them, stay away from them. I think right now these fish are on piles outside of the spawning areas. It's a good eater right there. Big crappie here. Come on, baby. Get her in the boat. <laughs> Look at that. Float up against the weed edge. That's all it is. Bam! Good fish right there. Good day. Hey, check out the guide service April, May. Email me at 3poundfishing at gmail.com. You can also call me at 618-694-5162. We'll put you on some big slabs. We got the month of April and May. And then they start to head back out, um, which is also an awesome time. So June, I've always promoted as June is it's a great time. They're just getting on those piles and bam, gonna put them in the boat.
another one. Show you what I'm fishing with, folks. Now, I'm partnered up with Ozark Rods, and I am because I just believe in their products. You have an option. You have your, you know, your standard good backbone. This is the Gray Series. It's probably the pole you're going to see me fish with the most. You have your Brush Buster, which is extra stiff, a little bit heavier. I like it equally as well. I use that in the 12-footer mostly. Um, but I also have a 10 footer here in the boat as well. So I can pick either one of those and I love them. The only difference really is the brush buster is just a tad bit stiffer. And I say stiff in a good way. I mean, it's got serious backbone to lift any fish in the boat. And so does the gray. It's just a little bit more sensitive, kind of a medium feel, like I like to say. Then they also have the jigging rod, which is the blue rod. That's their new one. That's super sensitive, very fast tip. Um, I don't currently fish with it necessarily but I do have one in the boat because a lot of people do like that feel of that fish really fighting so great pro series though right here is a great great rod and um, Ozark Rods is a great company so check them out on their website which is uh, ozarkrod.com and you can use my code 10% uh, to get 10% off which is the code three pound number three and then pound so great company check them out they support their products 100% Now some people have asked me, how do you do your minnows? So this is a number two hook, number two hook. I go through the chin up through the nose. So barely getting the, the lips, I can feel the crunch and then it goes right through the nose and that's how I do my minnows. The reason why I do it that way is because I think it hangs on a little longer. Um, it has more staying power, so to speak. Some people like to go through the eyes. What I found is that uh, I don't know, it wears them out really. They're working their, their way around so much. Um, to me, if I want a lot of action, I put it through the eyes. But for the most part, I always put it right through the chin, up through the nose. The secrets of spawning success. Well, I don't know about that. There's, there's, a, lot of, uh, there's a lot of great ways to catch spawning fish. Uh, you know, I fish with Jerry at the strip cut, and you know, we're just flipping jigs up there. But this is a clear water lake, so it is a lot. It is a lot harder to do that on a clear water lake because you just can't get that close to them. Um, in this cove, we actually have a little ripple, which is nice because it's a little protection. But the reality is, on this lake, you're going to have to cast to them a little bit, especially if you want to get up on the weed edge. On a stained lake, I think that's I think that's a great option. Uh, but on this lake, it makes it a little bit more difficult. In fact, one day we came out just intention of just doing that. We did not have success. I think the key here at this lake is getting away about at least a minimum of 30 feet, 30, 25 feet away from the weed edge and kind of pitching a, a minnow, pitching a jig, whatever. But you have to be at least that far away for the most part, especially if you don't have any wind. And I just go up and down these weed edges, you know, all day. And you just, you run into a hot spot here and there. It's really good if you can find a mixture of structure and these weed edges. Feels like a good fish. Good aggressive black nose. I've shown this a couple times, but I'll keep showing it. Uh, these are black nose crappie. Recessive gene creates that black line. Very aggressive fish. Fun fish to catch right there. I think we're gonna catch one more here. Two.
jig wasn't getting it, so you go right back to the float, right on top of that pile. That's another way of getting her done. That's a solid fish right there. All right. coming and watching and, and taking the time, getting a drink, relaxing, watching some fishing during these difficult times. Um, we put a lot of fish in the boat, a lot of solid eaters. Not any monsters, of course, but fish that anybody would be proud of. These are 12 and 13 inch fish. And uh, good fish right there, folks. Love it. The spawn is on. Don't forget the book guide trips, three pound fishing baby. Check me out on Facebook and Instagram too if you wouldn't mind. Look at the tuxedo on that guy. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks for watching another three pound fishing episode sponsored by these great companies. Hey folks, if you lasted this long, I really do appreciate you watching the entire episode. Hey, please subscribe, ring that bell, share the content on your Facebook page if you wouldn't mind. It would really help me out. Be safe.